Hi, I'm Andy Mann. I'm the Dean and Chief Academic Officer here at PCOM Georgia, and I'm excited to celebrate women in medicine. Hello everyone, we're here with the American Medical Women's Association, which serves to advance women in medicine and promote women's health. And we are interviewing Dr. Mann to honor and celebrate September Women in Medicine Month. Um, thank you for doing this interview with us. Um, to start off, uh, why did you decide to pursue a career in medicine? And did you have any uh, female role models that inspired your journey? So I don't really remember ever wanting to be anything but a physician. Um, I just, I can't really go back to a moment that made me remember this is what I wanted to do. Uh, but I would say my mom was my role model. She was not a physician, but she was a pharmacist. And she was one of two women in her pharmacy class. So she kind of inspired me because at the time, I, I didn't know anybody else who had a mom like mine. And she went to work and still showed up at all of my games when I was growing up. So she was kind of like my superhero. And um, also, my dad, not a woman, but he inspired me also to pursue a career in medicine because he told me that women could do anything and women could do it better. So he encouraged me to find a job that would make me um, personally happy and financially stable uh, so as not to rely on anybody in my life and be able to support myself and support my family. Hi, Dr. Mann. What are some challenges that you face as a female physician? So I think many women face challenges in medicine and as professionals. I would say that I was pretty fortunate that I didn't really face too many challenges. And perhaps that is because of how I was raised and also because I was fortunate enough to attend an all-girls school growing up and an all-women's college. So I didn't really have the same challenges in my education early on um, because I just kind of thought that I could really do anything. And so um, I didn't, any challenge that came my way, I just figured out, I guess, how to face it head on. Um, and if I couldn't face it head on, I would figure out how to go through a side door or the doggy door if necessary. So many women do face challenges in medicine, um, or even as leaders, uh, discriminating against women uh, for who they are, just as women, or because, or maybe not getting the same pay for the same work. I fortunately didn't really ha encounter too much of that. I believe that if you if you have someone giving you sort of some sort of negative energy or making you feel like you can't do something, I feel like you just need to rise above it and remain positive and try to figure out a way to get through it. Uh, that's, I think, the way I approach all challenges is just head on and I would encourage people to do the same. Hi, Dr. Mann. My name is Taya Bustle, and I serve as the secretary for AMWA. And my question was, in your opinion, um, what strengths do female physicians have over male physicians? I, I think our greatest strength is that, and this is probably a gross generalization, but I feel like we as women tend to nurture um, in our roles as daughters, as roles as mothers, sisters, we tend to nurture. And I think that really helps us when we're taking care of patients. We serve that nurturing role. Um, I kind of approach everything in my role as a leader as a mom, right? And as a mom, you have to be strict, you have to have rules, but you also need to love fiercely and be a mama bear when needed, right? So I think that's one of the advantages that we have as women is that sort of nurturing side. What are some weaknesses that you think that we might have? So I also see this as a weakness, right? Because when you, when you feel deeply, that can also be sort of your Achilles heel. And so I think that it's important to also be strong and show strength um, 
because we unfortunately don't really have the luxury of being able to be weak uh, because then we're perceived as um, someone who is a pushover and so you have to also portray strength. And lastly, um, how do you think that we can grow and nurture these strengths um, to become better women in medicine? Nurturing each other is really important and supporting each other. Um, we also, as women, tend to like to put ourselves down a lot. If you ever listen to women when they're connecting with each other, they tend to say, oh, you know, I'm having a bad hair day. Oh yeah, me too, girl, you know, I'm having a bad hair day too. And so instead, we should be pointing out each other's good things, right? Instead of putting ourselves down as a way of connecting. Um, men don't do that the same way, right? They, they lift each other up. And so we, we just approach things differently. So I think that we have to do better at supporting each other. Hi, Dr. Mann. My name is Amber Lim. I am the president of AMWA. And my question is, um, have you always aspired to become a physician instructor and administrator? And uh, what has inspired you to choose this career path? So I kind of fell into being an educator by accident. Um, one of my friends from medical school um, was starting a medical school and he said, I have a position for a chair of pediatrics. So my specialty is internal medicine and pediatrics. And so he offered that I come and interview for the position and I was offered the position. And so I kind of fell into it by accident. And it was hard at first, you know, to think I'm gonna leave my clinical practice because I love being a physician and I love caring for my patients. And what I realized in this role, I was able to do the same thing that I do for my patients, that I do for students. Um, and that was, I was able to watch my babies grow up into productive members of society. And I kind of feel like in this role, I'm able to do that with you as students. When you come in, you don't really know much, and then you get to grow as great physicians. And so it has been a really great opportunity for me and I've really enjoyed being a part of that and really helping to make students the best doctors that they can be. What is the most rewarding part of your current position? I just think watching you guys turn out to be great at what you do is my most rewarding part. I still keep in touch with my students from the years past. They'll call me or text me when great things are happening and they'll call me or text me when things are hard. Um, and I feel like they're part of my family. And so I think that's been the most rewarding part is maintaining relationships. One of the best parts about being a physician, at least a physician in primary care, is having relationships with people. And that's what really at the end of the day keeps me going. And so in this role, I'm still able to have relationships. And that's really important to me. Um, first of all, thank you so much for doing this. You're an inspiration to myself and all of us, and I think every woman here at PCOM Georgia. Secondly, my question is, um, what challenges do you face as a physician, mother, and wife, and how do you balance these roles and any other roles that you identify with? Yeah, so my kids are both in college now, so I feel like I've made it through the the hard part. Um, but when they were little, it was like a real big juggling act. So I used to say that my house was my house was like a tower of toothpicks, and if you pulled one of those out, the whole thing could come tumbling down. Um, but what I realized over time was that some things you just have to let go. So I always share with you guys that I exercise five days a week. And you might think that I've done that my whole life. I really haven't um, because I didn't really have the time and I was so focused on taking care of my kids and balancing that with a career. So I didn't have time to do that. And, and that may sound like an excuse, but 
I did have different sort of priorities at the time. And I recognized that sometimes my house just had to be dirty. And sometimes um, I was driving through McDonald's, you know? And so you have to kind of let things go. You can't always be 100% all the time. And I think that turned out okay for me. Um, and what was a really unforeseen consequence of this balance, especially I have an 18-year-old daughter, um, was for her to see, just like I saw my mom, that you can sort of do it all. Uh, and she didn't see that the house was dirty or she didn't realize that, you know, I was so stressed out that I couldn't make a meal and we had to just drive to McDonald's. But she now wants to be a physician because she sort of sees that success and she wants to be like that too. And I think that's what happened with me and my mom, right? So I think that I was able somehow to make it through and, you know, still to this day, I, I manage balancing that um, life with my kids and my job here. And when my kids were little, I used to draw a hard line in the sand and say, I can't actually volunteer to do that because I'm going to go home to my second full-time job, and that's my kids. And so I really believe that you do have to sort of compartmentalize it and try to maintain balance. Because your family at the end of the day is really the most important thing. And being a physician is important, but it's a job. And family is, is top, has to be top priority. At least it was for me. Thank you. That resonated with me. Yes, thank you.